Let's get some uh, thoughts on that. Joining me now from Washington is Edward Peck, uh, the former U.S. ambassador to Iraq. Thank you very much for being with us, Mr. Peck. Uh, uh, well, a lot of people are saying, uh, like-minded uh, political analysts that we talk to, that Israel is uh, benefiting from the last days of the Bush administration. Um, Israel certainly has a lot of enemies and allies in the region. Do you think this uh, war is going to cost Israel its allies? <clears throat> That's awful tough to say. The, here in the United States, I think it's very clear that it will not cost us, not cost Israel anything. The U.S. Congress has already passed a rather harsh resolution blaming everything on Hamas and supporting Israel, and that's quite likely to continue into the new administration. As to her other allies, if the Jordanians are actually talking about breaking relations, the Egyptians won't, and who are the other allies? Turkey, clearly not. It, it, seems, it seems to me that this time Israel may have done so much of a nasty nature to the Palestinians that there will be pretty much universal support for changing the relationship that she has with other countries, maybe. And Mr. Peck, uh, how come Israel and Egypt have been able to observe uh, a, a peace treaty for so long uh, with Jordan also? But how difficult is it, or why is it so difficult that peace is so hard to achieve between Israelis and Palestinians? Well, Israel saw, pardon me, Israel saw advantages to having peace with Egypt, land for peace, they gave back the Sinai, and they also saw some advantages to them in developing relationship with Jordan, which permitted a peace there. In the case of the Palestinians, uh, the Palestinians are living in the area that the Israelis want, so they can't make peace with them, especially if you've noticed that in recent months, both Mr. Perez, the president, and Mr. Omer, the prime minister, have said very clearly that the current path that Israel is following doesn't lead anywhere because of the demographics of the situation, the Palestinian population growing both in Israel and in the West Bank. So nations do what they perceive to be in their best interests. And the Israelis do not yet perceive, I think, I'm afraid, that you do not get peace and security on the point of a bayonet. That is just not going to work, especially there. And Mr. Beck, uh, well, you definitely heard about uh, the UN Security Council resolution that uh, called yes, for an immediate ceasefire. We also uh, got reports that the UN chief has called the Israeli uh, Prime Minister Ehud Olmert complaining that why Israel has rejected uh, the UN Security Council's uh, call for an immediate uh, ceasefire. What is next for, next for the Security Council? What next can it do to mm. bring Israel into compliance with that resolution? Well, I, I wonder if anybody has a, an exact count on how many Security Council resolutions Israel has ignored, either totally or, in the case of the invasion of Lebanon, for 18 years. The, the United Nations does not have an army. It has no way to compel anybody to do anything, and certainly not Israel, which is protected by the United States, as the abstention of Secretary Rice shows, uh, as, is, as was the case in 2008, uh, six, in, in, uh, pardon me, in Lebanon. We are prepared to hold up any peacemaking efforts so that Israel has a chance to punish Hezbollah in one case and Hamas in the other, despite everybody else in the world saying that that is unfair, illegal, unsanitary, call it whatever you will. And the Israelis are free to do whatever they wish because they're protected by us. Well, that's a very a good point uh, that I was going to uh, get to. Uh, are you saying, can one conclude that the United uh, Nations uh, is completely irrelevant now and uh, everything lies in the hands of the United States? And if the United States decides to uh, put an end to this, uh, it's going to happen. Otherwise, it's going to take years and decades before we're going to see peace between Israelis and Palestinians. 
Sir, uh, you know, you say you see peace between them. There's no war between them. It's an occupation, pure and simple. You don't have two nations fighting each other there. But the United States has no way possible to force Israel to do anything. We're not going to threaten Israel with war. It, relations might get poor, but they can still go ahead and do whatever they're doing because Israel is not going to be a target for our military forces regardless of what she does. And they, they know that, I think, and the rest of the world, too, knows it. Our support for Israel has been unstinting, unwavering, unhesitating for all these years. But do you Whether think, you think the reasons are... Pardon me. But do you think that countries other than the United States uh, will be able to uh, effect any change or effect, in the short term, at least, uh, a peace treaty or... I would say, a ceasefire between uh, the Israelis and the Palestinians. But they could certainly urge it. It's important to remember that there's an election going on in Israel as well. And the contenders for the prime ministership are very determined that they're going to show everybody that they're tougher than the other guys by beating up on the Palestinians as best they can. And you can't overlook the domestic politics going on in Israel now between Netanyahu and, and Livni and maybe Barak uh, on the side because they are going to be tough against these terrorists and nobody's going to stop them while the election is going on and I don't think they're going to be able to stop them afterwards. The Israelis, uh, their declared objective uh, of attacking Gaza uh, the Gaza Strip has been to, uh, in their words, remove the terror of uh, Hamas rocket fire. Am I to conclude that there is other ob objectives uh, beyond what they have been saying? Well, uh, I, I have never consulted closely with the leaders of Israel, but there are other objectives. They want everybody to be sure and understand, and they've used this word, as I'm sure you're aware, that our response to any kind of provocation will be disproportional. We're not looking for an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. We're looking for a whole pot full of teeth in exchange for one tooth. The ha ha Hamas has been in Gaza now, a er territory that was occupied savagely for 37 years and has been under a total embargo for two and a half, almost two years. That's an act of war. That's why Israel started the 67 war when Egypt closed access to the port of Eilat on the Red Sea. And they had the other ports, but when those recent ships, the Free Gaza Movement, went to Gaza last year, that was the first time that foreign ships had been into Gaza in 41 years. Now, so the, the people living there, all of whom most of whom were forced out of what is now Israel in the 48 war or the 67 war, they have serious, realistic grievances against the Israeli people. And the Israelis have homemade rockets that have made a lot of people nervous and upset and distressed and has killed, unfortunately, a, a few of them. But the price that they're being asked to pay in response is not acceptable to anybody in the world except Israel and some people in the United States. And of course this war is going to make things a lot more difficult for Israel than it's been. Uh, uh, killing a lot of people, uh, over 800, is going to anger the population in the Gaza Strip and we're going to see more violence against Israel, uh, retaliatory attacks I would say in the future too. Yes sir. I'm afraid you're right. You know, these things that, that you and I are both predicting are things that neither one of us wants to see happen. But you can take, if you're a government or a person, you can take any action that you believe is going to advance your national interests. And you should be prepared to accept and understand the results that those actions bring about. Some of them you're not going to like. Some of them you're not going to like a lot, which is why you ought to think carefully, pardon me, before you start killing people.
Thank you very much indeed to Edward Peck, the former U.S. ambassador to Iraq in Washington.